The summer months are often a time when families travel together, perhaps vacation, a family reunion, or just a quick trip to grandma's house. These road trips can either be miserable or days when wonderful memories are made. What a picture of all of life. We are just passing through this world and families must learn how to enjoy the Lord and one another as we make the journey together. We are taking a summer road trip through the book of Philippians, the book of Christian joy, and discovering principles to help our homes. Let's join Scott Pauley now for today's study. If you're going to open a locked door, you have to have a key. Maybe at your house you have a, a spare key somewhere. Uh, so when you get locked out, you can still gain access. Keys are important. When you come to a book of the Bible, it's always helpful to try to identify what is the key. Perhaps there's a key chapter, uh, a key theme. Uh, very often there's a key word. And one word of the Word of God is so powerful because when God repeats a word, uh, chooses a certain word as a point of emphasis, it helps us to enlarge and open uh, the entire message the Lord's trying to get across to us. I've said many times that the key word in the book of Philippians is the word joy. It's first used in Philippians chapter 1, verse 4, where Paul says, Always in every prayer of mine for you all, making request with joy. It really is the joy book. At least 18 times in four chapters you find the word joy, uh, the word rejoice. Uh, another time, you find the word gladness. So there's no doubt about it. This is a book of joy, and if you're going to understand the message of the book, you have to understand what Christian joy looks like. But in Philippians chapter 1, there's another word, another key word that is emphasized. In fact, it is used six times in the first chapter alone. It is the word gospel. I think this is very important. Because there is no joy apart from the good news of Jesus Christ. Uh, Tammy and I had the privilege recently uh, to speak to a woman in her home about Christ and standing at her door uh, to explain to her who the Lord is and uh, to see her come to faith in Christ. During that visit, during that discussion, I just kind of offhanded said to her, do you know what the word gospel means? And she said, no, sir. She said, I've heard the word many times, but I don't know what it means. And I said to her, it means good news. Oh, I wish you could have seen her face light up. You know, in a world of bad news, everybody's looking for some good news. In a world of fake news, everybody's looking for true news. May I tell you that the news of the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ and all of its implications to our lives is truly good news. And yes, it is news you can count on. It's true in every way. So if you're going to understand what joy looks like in your heart and in your home, you have to begin with the gospel. Now, Philippi was a very wicked place. It was a worldly city. In fact, it might interest you to know that in Paul's day, they referred to it as a little Rome. <laughs> That's not a compliment. It means it was full of paganism and idolatry and immorality and debauchery. It was a wicked place. And yet, ponder this just a moment. It was still possible to know God in little Rome. It was still possible to have a Christian family in little Rome. It was still possible to serve the Lord in little Rome because God made it so that you could know the Lord and walk with him in any generation and in any context. I'll remind you that in Acts chapter 16, we learned that God's work in Philippi started in homes, in the home of Lydia, in the home of that Philippian jailer, and God wants to begin his great work in all of our homes. And what I'd like to do is I'd like to identify for you from Philippians chapter 1 all of these references to the gospel and make an application to our homes. Let's talk about the gospel family. Verse number 5 of Philippians 1 says this, For your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now. So uh, there's one mention of the gospel. Then come down to verse number 12. The Bible says, But I would ye should understand, brethren, that the things which happen unto me have fallen out rather unto the furtherance of the gospel. So in verse 5, you have the fellowship in the gospel. In verse 12, you have the furtherance of the gospel. And then, again, in verse number 27, Only let your conversation be as it becometh the gospel of Christ, that whether I come and see you or else be absent, I may hear of your affairs that you stand fast in one spirit with one mind, striving together 
for the faith of the gospel. Now, what a beautiful uh, flow of thought through Philippians 1. Your fellowship in the gospel, the furtherance of the gospel, and the faith of the gospel. Let me give you the first great truth today. If you want to have a joy-filled home, if you want to have a happy home, then you have to have a gospel home, a gospel family. Where does that begin? Well, number one, if you're going to have a gospel family, each member of your family needs to have exercised the faith of the gospel. Now, I'm using the Bible phrase here from Philippians 1, verse 27, the faith of the gospel. What does that mean? It means that individually each person must come to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ for themselves. I alluded to this in our last study when we talked about Lydia and the jailer in Philippians, or in, in Philippi rather, in Acts chapter number 16, uh, that though their entire household was saved, the household wasn't saved because they individually got saved. Uh, every person must come to faith in Christ for themselves. So faith is not a group sport. It is the individual response. It's the individual heart attitude towards God's truth. It has to begin with somebody. Maybe you're the first person in your family to come to faith in Christ. Oh, praise God for that. Now, that's an opportunity for you to point all the other members of the family to the Lord. Maybe you're the last person in the family and you've not yet put your faith in Christ. I want you to know uh, that if you're going to come into the family of God, your parents and grandparents and other family members can't do that for you. You have to know the Lord Jesus Christ for yourself because faith is always an individual thing. Faith is a personal thing. Have faith in God. Or in the words of the apostle to uh, the jailer there in Philippi in Acts 16 verse 31, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. So each member needs to have exercised their own faith in the gospel of Jesus Christ. Uh, dear one, settle the matter of your own soul salvation. Your spouse can't do that for you. Your parents can't do that for you. It's between you and God, not you and someone else. I was speaking, Tammy and I, ministering at a couples conference some time ago. And in the middle of that couples conference, I just had the definite impression to give the gospel. You imagine couples coming to a conference, work on their marriage. Uh, these are Christian people, but I just very definitely sensed uh, the prompting of the Holy Spirit. And so I did. And at the end of the meeting, uh, there was a man in the meeting, a husband, a young husband, who came to me and he said, my wife is a Christian and my family's been praying for me, but tonight I finally settled my own soul salvation. Tonight I called on the Lord in faith and asked him to save me. What a joy. Uh, don't assume, ask. Know for sure that you are saved and speak to each other member of the family about it and make very sure that they are saved. Get all of your family in the ark of safety. So settle your own salvation and then claim each family member for Christ. Look, we're not just trying to build a home for this world. We want to build a home with eternity in view. We want to build a household of faith, which means that we're not just living for this world. We're not just simply trying to make this world a better place from which people can go to hell. Instead, we are seeking in this life to come to know the Lord in a personal way so that in the world to come, in eternity, we all can be together around the throne of God. Isn't that what you want? Dear one, if you've never received Jesus as your personal Savior, would you believe on him now? Would you call on him in faith? He promised, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You can do that right where you are. You're not with me, I'm not with you, but God is where you are at this moment, and he will save you if you trust him. And if you know the Lord is your Savior, begin today to claim each family member for Christ and ask the Lord to help each one of them to exercise their own faith in the gospel of Jesus Christ. What can you take away from this study of God's Word? Where do you need to apply truth to your own life and family? God's Word is the guidebook for this journey of life, and we sincerely pray that you will follow it. Visit us at enjoyingthejourney.org for additional resources for your home and Christian life. Plan to join us again on our next study and encourage all of your family to make the summer road trip with us. May God bless you and those you love today.